One of the issues that you're going to deal with in planting trees around your gardens and in your house is tree roots. Just take a look at this 40 foot long tree root. And this was in a septic system, one of the septic lines that found its way through one of the cracks. And this, by the way, is a weeping willow tree root. So I always recommend planting weeping willows way away from the house. You know, a lot of people love the shape of weeping willows. They're nice, they weep, they've got a beautiful characteristic to them but they love wet areas and they seek them out. So this is not a tree that you're gonna plant close to your house, nor are you gonna plant something like a sycamore. Sycamore also has very strong roots and they can get into your foundation. Now, especially if you have a poor foundation, those roots are gonna find their way through your foundation. Some houses have very little of a foundation if you're looking at some of the older houses that you might find. And then maples, just generally speaking, many maples, especially the silver maple, has a lot of surface roots and they also can seek out water and affect some of your piping systems. So those trees either should not be planted or planted way away from your home. A common question I get is, what can I do with all these tree roots? Well, certain trees produce a lot of surface tree roots. Some trees produce mainly a tap root that goes straight down. You really can't trim the roots. You know, if somebody says, oh, I got a root here, here. If you look at all these roots, and you start trimming some of these roots, some of these roots have a diameter of six to eight inches. That could damage the tree itself. It could also damage the support of the tree, keeping the tree from blowing over against your home. The other problem that tree roots give us is you can't take a shovel and dig or plant a plant. If you look around here, very few plants have survived around this gumball tree, which I not one of my favorite because they produce all those gumballs in the fall. So the idea that you need to keep in mind is pick trees that don't produce surface roots like this because eventually they're going to give you a problem. The other thing to keep in mind is if you're thinking about planting a tree close to the house, you need to take the diameter of that tree. Let's say a tree gets 60 feet wide you take half of the diameter, which is 30 feet, and then I add another 10 or 15 feet to that, so I will not plant a tree closer than 45 or 50 feet or more from the house. Two things, you won't have tree roots around the house, so you don't trip on them, and the tree hopefully will not fall on your house if your house, isn't, uh, if your house is far enough. One of the things that you're probably going to want to be able to do around your trees is plant shrubs, perennials, ground covers. And here, the shovel goes in. And this is a tree. It's one of my favorite trees, the golden rain tree. But I always learn, there's, with the good, there still may be a few bad things. My dad, personally, kind of doesn't like this tree because all through the garden, the seeds germinate and you have all these little plants that he has to weed. Some other great trees that you might consider are the new hardy dogwood trees. You can grow under those dogwood trees very easily. And if there are any surface roots, there's not a lot. Uh, American holly, you can grow under, great tree magnolias. Now, not the southern magnolia with the shiny leaves, but some of the magnolias that lose their leaves are fantastic trees that you can grow under. Another tree that you can grow around that really is probably one of my favorite trees is 
the hardy crepe myrtle. Getting back to all those tree roots, what can you do? Well, one thing, and it's expensive, you could remove the tree and have the roots removed or just leave it be, don't walk through it and just have the roots give you that beautiful effect or you can mulch it with maybe two or three inches of shredded pine bark, a bark that doesn't break down quickly. So those are some things that you can do with trees with a lot of surface roots. I'm Mark Viette. Join me next time in the garden. For more garden tips, go to inthegardenradio.com.